What's going on guys, Bruce Matson here, your host show of Metric Scout Fantasy Football. I've ran some numbers from week one. We still have Monday night's game to play, but I looked at the target share, looked at the air yards, and I ran a report, and I'm finding some buy lows at wide receiver for you guys. These numbers aren't going to be as sticky because we have a one game sample size. Usually you want a sample size of like three to four games, but what I'm doing is taking air yards of 89 yards or more for that player in week one and then i'm looking at the bucket of those players and taking out the players who produce 69 yards or less and then going through the ones who look like they'd be by lows because there were some studs in there and just going to go over the numbers with you and they could be by lows for you or they could be guys you're not interested in and some of them might be on the back end of your roster because some of these are back end of the roster dudes but these are players we need to look at. This is a process I do for my DFS lineups. I look at the air yards. I look at the target share. Project them out. Go back, look at the last three weeks. And see what kind of volume this player is getting. And if they're getting a lot of volume but not producing, I may throw them in some lineups. Also, if a player is getting work, a lot of volume in the passing game. But it's not equating to touchdowns and yards and catches. And they're still getting targeted. They're still owning a large portion of the air yards and targets in their offense. Then there's an indicator that they might hit later on down the road in the season. That might be during a plus matchup in a high scoring game or just a random game. And you may want to pop that player into your lineup once attrition hits or if you want to gamble on them or whatever. But I'll be going over this report, giving you a few players five of them, four of them, three of them, ten of them, whatever pops up each week. But today I'm going to give you five wide receivers we can look at from the air yards report that I pulled. The first wide receiver that I want to talk about today is Donovan Peoples-Jones. Not the sexiest player, but he did some things yesterday against Carolina. Had a 36.7% target share. That's huge. That's a big time. Let's see if he can maintain that. I doubt it. That's hard for many wide receivers to hold, but that's a huge target share. Had 11 targets. Big time work in the passing game. Only 87 air yards for 11 targets. That's a little bit low in the air yards when you're getting targeted that much, but still, that's a good percent share of the targets. 38.3% of the air share, so he owns a large portion of the air yards. You have to when you're getting targeted 11 times in a game. This could be variance from the game. This could be because how the game was played. It was kind of tight throughout. So let's see. However, considering he got 69 yards or less, he's a buy low due to the metrics. He also had a .82 or 82% whopper weighted opportunity rating, which is a mix between the target share and air yards. All the numbers here are pointing good. However, it's a sample of one, remember. If we had a sample... In this, that was from two, three, four games. It'd be a little bit more stickier. However, when you're just looking at one game, which is all we got right now, one game of the season, it is not sticky, and it's a gamble to use a sample size of one. Next is DJ Chark. We saw this in the preseason. We know he's an air yards guy. We saw that before in Jacksonville. We saw this when he was coming out of college. We saw this with his 40 time. 124 air yards yesterday, also had 8 targets, This is good. This was a slam dunk matchup against the Eagles because we knew this was going to be a high scoring game. A 21.26% target share, always good. Owned 40% of the air yards, you can't beat that really. And a 61% whopper, a weighted opportunity rating. I look for DJ Chark to be the deep threat. I look for him to get them deep opportunities. Might be volatile. Or this might be sticky if he continues with that target share. We'll see. I can see that target share dipping a bit considering there's other pass catchers in the offense. They could feed or eat off each other. But for right now, considering the price, considering he should be on the back end of someone's roster, but he could be on the waivers in some leagues, really depends on bench size. And redraft bench size is a lot smaller. DJ Chart could be a guy you want to buy low on. So let's take a look at him for this week. Another one. We talked about him yesterday. Traylon Burks, good target share numbers at 16.1% and good air yards numbers at 99. 99 air yards, almost hit that 100-yard mark off five targets. 
deep threat guy, 34.1% air share, solid, a 48% whopper, which is solid. What I like about him is his yak, his yards after the catch. He's got a lot of potential for that. Good size adjusted speed, and they're showing that they will target him deep. Five targets is good for a rookie campaign considering they did not pass the ball that much. So I like that. He's going to be on the back end of someone's roster. You're probably not going to be able to prime away. The model is saying, hey, this guy might have some splash spots or some big games here whenever there's a good matchup. So you may want to look into Traylon Burks. I told you the other day, hold him as hard or as tight as you can. Again, with these numbers for these three players, I'm prefacing this a bunch of times just so you don't get it twisted. This is a sample of one. That does not mean these are sticky. The longer you can forecast out, usually you go back three games, four games. That way, variance doesn't smack you in the mouth due to injuries, due to matchups and all that. Uh, if you make the pool bigger with the amount of games, like say you're looking off five, six, seven, that game becomes less sticky because there's more variance in that pool because players on that player's team could have been injured or not injured, different matchups, all kinds of stuff. But the last three to four weeks when you're looking at the output is the most stickiest per smarter people than me that I've learned from over the years. Next wide receiver I'm talking about here is Marvin Jones for Jacksonville. 15.8% target share, six targets, 101 air yards, a 27.5% share of the air yards, and a 43% whopper, weight opportunity rating. I thought he was going to be a sneaky play. I really did, but I wasn't buying in. He should be on waivers in some leagues. I might be on the back end of some rosters. Check him out. Again, one game opportunity. This could dip. I look for Jacksonville to be very streaky with their wide receivers. 101 air yards is nice. Let's see what happens. I would wait a week or so before I go, fill, go, especially with most of these guys. I would want a bigger sample. But if you want something off the rip, or if you're playing DFS, DFS, this could be a little indicator for you for some of your tournament lineups. And if you're multi-entry in those, meaning that you're doing 60, 50, 100, 1,000 lineups, you're looking at this and you're configuring your builds so you make your optimal bills, especially with your cheap plays. Last one, a very cheap guy, a guy that you're not picking up, but a guy that I wanted to bring off the list just in case. Maybe someone's hurting really bad. Who knows? Week two, we should not be looking at Ashton Doolin, but week two here, there is some good things. 95 air yards off six targets, which is solid. 12% target share is not that great, but a 29.8% share of the air yards. He's a guy you just want to pay attention to, or you just subscribe to this channel, because when I run these numbers again next week and the week after, if he's still doing this, he'll be on here, because if he's on here, I'll make sure to bring him up in some capacity. That way you know, or you get that indicator whether to go after him, but I don't suggest picking him up, but he is flashing a signal from week one, like, hey, I might be able to produce some volume here, give you some production in the right matchups. If the game script goes my way, if I'm getting some targets downfield, all I have to do is catch one or two of them, and I got a good fantasy performance. The workload here is a good indicator of that, especially for all five of these wide receivers. They got good workload this week. They got the workload that could allow them to pop off. Now we're just going to have to watch for week two, week three, week four, see if this continues. Because like I said, one game, week one, doesn't mean it's going to happen for the rest of the season. So you just want to watch the numbers, see if they're sticky, or just hit subscribe again. Because I'm going to go over this every week. This is easy for me to do. And next week might be 3 players, 5 players, 10 wide receivers. Whatever I feel when I run the numbers. Also the thresholds will be a little different. Considering we're working off more weeks. So again these are just 5 by lows per the model that I was working off of. Just filter sorting through the air yards and target shares. But let me know what you think. Let me know if this is something you're interested in. I'll continue to run this because this is part of my process. I'm doing this anyways for my DFS lineups. 
So might as well share this with you guys in this form so it'll help somebody out with their lineup decisions or their DFS lineups down the road. But let me know what you think. Drop in the comments. Make sure to smash that like button on the way out. Helps this video and the algorithm. Pushes it out there on the YouTubes. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Helps out the channel and also will help you because I'm dropping fantasy football content on the daily. I want to thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next vid.